Good morning, everybody. Hello. Uh, today will be a fun. <laughs> uh, today we're talking about pandemic burnout. Uh, but before before we dive in, I'm Mark Van Stenwick. I direct the Center for Prophetic Imagination. Uh, I'm Daniel Walpert. I direct Micah, the Minnesota Institute of Contemplation and Healing. We're your uh, daily source of sunshine. <laughs> you don't need to take vitamin D if you uh, listen to this. You know? <laughs> On a cloudy day. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, so, so today we're basically trying to ignore the fact that the impeachment trial is starting. You know, like it's we, hard to it's I hard to we, care. At this yeah, point, it's it just really hard to is. care. Like he's like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, and yeah, it's like okay, he can't get elected to office. Is that's not really the thing I'm afraid of? Is him running for office again? Yeah, that's not my big concern. But anyways, I already spent more time on it than I want. <laughs> just those three go. seconds. Yeah. Oh, hey, we we've got a we've got an engineering question that's come in from Julia. Uh, yeah, Mark, is your backyard office warm in this deep freeze? It's actually doing well. Like it's yeah. 69 degrees in here right now. It takes a little longer for it to get up to to the right heating. Like just so people know. So this is a backyard shed. And if you look down here, you can kind of see like there's these. I have two of those little heater units. And that's it. In infrared. Yeah, they're uh, infrared heating units. And they work fine. Even though they're fairly cool. red. You, you can kind of see red if you look in <laughs> the, into the grate. Into the guts of them. Well, I, look, I mean, we insulated that place like crazy. As you know, much as we could. Uh, yeah. Most houses, just for people listening, have six-inch studs. Uh, so you can do a lot of insulation. These are four-inch because it's a shed. And so cramming insulation in there was hard. It was a little well, engineering feat. Well, I mean... Well, because we didn't just cram it in, we then put a layer over yep. the studs. So that, that baby sealed up. Yeah, that's right. And Tape, the taped, foamed, the whole deal. Yeah, it's so it's great. Um, yeah, so we talked about the shed. <laughs> so that's which, a good which, I mean, to me, I built the shed as a way of. There, it was a pragmatic thing, but there was a kind of a coping mechanism. Like a lot of people, when the pandemic hit, like all of a sudden, like, what am I supposed to do with my time? So there was this initial sense, like there was too much free time or like a, a lack of focus. And so a lot of people started engaging in projects. A lot of people just yeah. did not because the they just, it took everything within them just to kind of function. And so, you know, we're a year into it. And there's a sense, like Biden's president now, so maybe people think, oh, this is, it's all gonna be okay. Some people are like tired of having to deal with this crap and they want normal. Some people never bought into the idea that there's a real pandemic they should be worried about. But at, at some level across the board, there is this sort of shifting towards it, sort of fatigue or burnout. And people are coping with that differently. No. And one of the ways well, we see it, like every time I drive by a, like uh, LA Fitness and I see the parking lot full, like my, <laughs> like, right. kind of like get kind of like a little bit of a traumatized response. I'm like, who the hell would be in there? Like, even if they have to use every other elliptical machine, it's still not like that's <laughs> a safe place to be. But there's a lot of that happening right now, more than there was before. Yeah. Yeah, so there really is this kind of interesting mix of uh, right burnout, the ongoing denial, the excitement and anticipation of the vaccine, um, and so right. So there's no question that there's a huge number of people that are just like we're done. You know, we're going back to normal. I mean, I. Um, We've seen a lot of pictures of this right after the Super Bowl. If you saw any pictures of, of Tampa Bay, the city streets were just full of people partying unmasked. A friend of mine posted a picture 
uh, yesterday of a concert in Wisconsin over the weekend, hundreds of people on mass crammed together partying. Um, I went into a brewery the other day just to buy some cans of beer and was absolutely shocked by the fact the place was full. And it wasn't even, you know, every other table kind of full or socially distanced tables that were full. It was just full. Which brewery was that? It was up in Duluth. Yeah. Okay. And, um, okay. Yeah, and right. I came out and I was just stunned, you know, and I got in the car and I said to Deborah, I'm feeling really weird. Like that place was full of people. And, um, yeah. And so I think there's, there's, and then you've got the people that are still trying to, you know, behave right. Or protect themselves or whatever you want to call it. And, um, and they're feeling increasingly weird. Right. And, and I'm certainly one of those people where, you know, you, the more places you go to, or as you say, the more parking lots you drive by, um, that, uh, you know, that, are full, you start thinking, why am I doing this? Like, what is this helping? Is this just helping me? Like, what's the point? Um, well, and this is the thing, like, just like everything we've talked about, you know, <laughs> Gus is like, <laughs> wait, am I the only one having deja vu? Haven't we done this episode? Well, yes, <laughs> in a way we have, uh, cause we have to touch in, but you know, this is, we've also talked about this reality that, the way we tend to talk about this, like those people in the parking lots, is to shame them for their individual poor moral choices. And so our sense tends to be like, let's blame individuals for not being smart. Mm -hmm. That's who we'll blame for this problem that we're in. Um, it's the like recycling myth. Mm -hmm. Like as though that's individuals not recycling are the responsible parties for climate change as though it's not like that the blame should be primarily focused elsewhere. The same thing with this, like ye, part of the burnout is this very real dilemma that people face. Like, I can't tell you how many friends I have. Uh, I've talked around about it, like who started drinking more during the pandemic and now are worried, like, I think I might have a problem. Right. There's a lot of that going around. A yeah. uh, lot of unhealthy behaviors because we're trying to figure out how to survive. A lot yeah. of people dealing with different health, mental health issues yeah. in my family. That's been a big Huge. issue. And so it's like you, at some point you're like, COVID isn't as bad. Yeah. And well, like we can and shame it and just keeping mm -hmm. shame on people just to make sure that COVID is the worst thing they can imagine so that they always, they fall in line is not, that's just putting all the burden on individuals to make smart moral choices rather than it's like pushing harder for systemic choices. And now with Biden in office, people have leaned back from, it's like what always happens, leaned back from a systemic critique because like give the man some room to work. And then there's been pivoting more towards blaming individuals because we can't blame Trump. Like I've seen that happen too. Yeah. Well, and then another thing that I'm really starting to think about and and Gus, this is the, the new part of the episode now. <laughs> One of the things that, that I'm really starting to think about, right, as these variants emerge, as we continue to have, you know, the, the various climate-related issues accelerate, um, as we continue to have uh, very unstable, more and more unstable governments all around the world, um, you know, we continue to have uh, the threats of big cities running out of water. Uh, you know, that hasn't been in the news as much recently, but it's still going on. Um, is I, I think that part of what we're beginning to face down is the fact that this may not go away, right? Like this just may not go away. I mean, if, if some of these variants are uh, able to get around the current vaccine, you know, and become more like, this becomes more like the flu, right? Where you do have to make a new vaccine every year. Um, and yet it's more deadly than the flu. And then, you know, maybe another illness is going to emerge and you continue to have all of the destabilization related to climate change. Um, 
you know, this may kind of be the way the world now is, is, right? Including all of, you know, in sci-fi movies, right? You, you often have these things where you've got like the different zones or the different places where people yeah. can go and can't go. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking just the other day, I was like, you know what? We've now got that. Right. So like New Zealand, which is COVID free, basically, they did have three cases the other day. So in order to go to New Zealand, even if you're a New Zealander and you want to go back home, the waiting list is now three to four months long, because in order to get back in, you have to live in a government approved hotel for two weeks. And those are all full because all these New Zealanders are like trying to get back to the safe zone in the world where there's no COVID and life is normal. I'm like, oh my God, that's like exactly like all these sci-fi films. It's like, you know, the one that comes to mind, there's abundant versions of this, but yeah. Ale the one Elysium with uh, Matt Damon and, and uh, yeah. Jodie Foster where, you, you know, it's the trope of like the earth's landscape is a shan a perpetual shanty town of disease and and dirt and then there's like a space station for the rich people like this is what you know as climate change happens in certain areas become less stable and if there's diseases and other issues that come up rich people are going to be fine like they'll be able to like buy their way into new zealand or other places right and so this really presses this point that like why it angers me at a, such a level, like, you know how you get angry and then there's a hot anger and then it, it just somehow transcends <laughs> to a cold anger where it's just always with you. I have that sort of cold, perpetual anger towards people who <laughs> want to back off because Biden is president now because as though we can distrust him. Because really what needs to happen is we need to, we need to push as much as possible to have these different parts of the infrastructure oriented towards people like regular people, not rich people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, national, some sort of national health system. We've talked about this. So we've talked about this all the time. So maybe we are like a broken record, but at the same time, we're moving in the wrong direction right now in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, in other ways, we have some reason for optimism, but like we have to really leverage as much as possible to kind of get this to work out for us because all these uh, sci-fi movies that talk about this dystopia where rich people live well and the rest of us are suffering aren't just making shit up. <laughs> right, That's right. based upon a historic precedent projected forward into the future with technology. That's all it is. It's a technological spin on stuff we've already experienced. It's not, none of this is new, but no. we're seeing an intensification happen as we enter late stage consumer capitalism with all of its environmental uh, implications. So some comments are starting to roll in. Uh, Susan writes, I'm fatigued by winter at this point. Yeah, this has been the worst winter because I usually like winter, but this is not fun if you can't really go out and do a lot of fun wintry things, like even going into a coffee shop and hanging out all day. Uh, but I really want Trump to be impeached and convicted. That would be nice. And I want the Dems to act decisively and boldly. No getting jerked around by the Republicans yet again for four years of wasted time. For example, the 15 hour minimum wage now. No. Yeah. It'd be no. good to see some forward momentum on some things as like a way of counteracting some of the, the discouragement of this pandemic yeah. time. Like if we can't end up using this in, in some way to getting some wins, it'll be very disappointing. Uh, Susan is also back to normal as it was, nope. That's how I hope yeah. we all will be. Like, I want us all to not want to go back to normal, but to go move forward into a better normal. Well, and, and this, though, is, is getting at what I was talking about, though, Susan, is that I, I feel like there is this continual sense of going backwards that, that that's possible, right? That everybody will get vaccinated, will go back to normal. I, I'm starting to feel like it will begin to dawn on us that that just is not, a, that's not at all an option, you know, and that, and that the forward to quote a new normal may not be a good new normal, right? 
you know, and, and so I think that that's, um, you know, that's what I see uh, again, not only dawning in myself, but beginning to see in some other people. And I do think that that's part of this phenomenon of just people going out and doing stuff, because I do think that at some level consciously or unconsciously, a lot of people are just starting to realize like, okay, look, this is just going to be the way it is. And, you know, as you're saying, Mark, there are a lot of other very negative things that are going on from a health point of view. And people are just like, okay, I got to weigh bad choices. Yeah. Right. Which, you know, if, if for comfortable Americans, right, we have been free of that. But I do think one of the things we need to name for the entire world is that for most people in the world, that is what life is about. Right, is weighing a lot of bad choices, and um, you know, and I feel like one of the reasons, in particular, why white Americans are freaking out right now is because suddenly, uh, you know, many of us who have not been in that place for a long time are starting to be in that place more and more, and yeah, and there's a great deal of discomfort about that. But I think that that's uh, you know, that's just what we're seeing. Uh, Patricia writes, I have a song I sing. Okay, I'm going to try to guess what the melody for this would be as I read this quote. Uh, it's like, do da, do da. Yeah, it's like, camp town ladies. Yeah. I'm so done with COVID. COVID's not done with me. <laughs> yeah. How's that? That works. Uh, <laughs> Julia writes, uh, I'm going to continue to lay low and wait to vaccinate till the variant strains make themselves more known. I mean, that's the smart play. Okay. Uh, James Once writes, yeah. there's so many states like this, James. Where I live, I hear a lot of complaints about our governor for trying to be safe. No. Are you in Wisconsin? Uh, <laughs> We're going to governor in Wisconsin. James, James is in Oregon, so. Oh, in Oregon. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's another, another place where that's happening. Uh, Julia writes, and who knows what biology is waking up from melting permafrost. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's yep. another sci-fi trope of like some sort of, I mean, this is where the zombie apocalypse, some sort of yeah. flesh eating bacteria in Antarctica. Uh, series writes, this is all depressing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. It, it is depressing. Yeah. Is um, depressing. And you know, it's, there's like, this is a thing like optimism. It can be nice <laughs> if you have reasons for it. We, but we have to make our reasons for optimism. We can't just lay back and wait for, and think, oh, everything will be worked out. We'll work out if we just kind of wait and see. Um, and this is where I'm most discouraged is because I've, I've seen uh, a rolling back of tenacity in recent months. And it's it, and at the same time, it's totally understandable. Like, why wouldn't we be tired? And yeah. I mean, we had a pandemic, the George Floyd uprisings uh trump like it's we all deserve a good nap and rest but we're not at a point where we have the luxury for that really as a society uh and then to make it worse uh the wealthiest people are doing great with this so they have, <laughs> so like i'm sure they want to go to their local bar without fear um so they want some things to go back to normal but they don't we don't need to have even the old normal like the most powerful people on the earth have benefited from this. So of course the new normal will kind of skew in their favor unless we make it uncomfortable for them. So this is yeah. uh, organizing one one We have to bring discomfort right. into a system that is going to normally drift a certain way. Well, and this morning, uh, Raymond Camper, who's a friend of ours, was mm -hmm. on the CPI board for a while and stuff, he, you know, made this lovely post, uh, where he just said like, okay, so imagine a society where everybody has their basic needs taken care of. And, um, you know, if you amassed uh, a, an amount of money, more than several million dollars, you, the excess over that got taxed and got paid for the other stuff. And so that, you know, within uh, a realm of livability you you could have different economic choices and you could become a millionaire if you wanted to but you couldn't become a billionaire and um you know and everybody knew that they had their needs taken care of and 
just, you know, like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> right? Um, and one of the things I posted in response to that, right, is that now imagine that Christians for whom this is the basic biblical vision of economic equality um, actually supported such a thing and advocated for such policies, right? I mean, this, this is the other weird perversion of where we've gotten on this is that the majority of people who go to Christian churches right now would read that and say, oh, you're being an awful commie and you're being a terrible libtard. And it's like, they don't even realize that, no, this is actually what the tradition says God wants for people, right? Is, is that kind of like base level security, which is something that is totally affordable, right? I mean, that it, in our society, that is completely affordable. It's, it's not even a question. It's amazing what people will reach for. Like it is totally possible <laughs> for every person on this earth to have a basic sustainable life. Yeah, but instead food, we water and a place to live. <laughs> instead we reach to, towards Malthusian nightmares that this is all caused by Africans having too many babies, um, which is the lefty <laughs> version of this, the right wing version of it. It's like somehow tramples our freedoms, uh, communism, uh, red scare crap. Uh, it's just so many things we reach to instead of like the, this the recognition. World, the world order where everybody will just be lying around drinking vodka and not doing anything. Well, and then there's the bizarre version of it like, well, unless things are shitty, what leverage point do we have for proclaiming the gospel? Which is a total <laughs> gigantic motivator for uh, different Christians. It totally yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and so people will read the Bible and say, well, they'll quote, you don't work, you don't eat. But then they'll gloss over the part where it says, if you don't take care of your brother or sister, you're worse than an unbeliever. Like they'll, you know, yeah. it's just bizarre to me how much we've been gamed and, and manipulated by the religion that really <laughs> the teachings of Jesus uh, are really in contrast to that. Um, some more comments Karen. here. Yeah. Uh, Elon Musk thinks he is Tony Stark, <laughs> but he's more like Lex Luthor. Uh, he is uh, planning to blast our capitalist disaster into space. Watch The Expanse, realistic sci-fi with class oppression blasted into space. Yeah. Yes, uh, The Expanse is a, is a really enjoyable show. Uh, it's got a lot of moving parts, and so the, the plot gets a little complex, but it's, it's great. It's more realistic than most sci-fi has been. Okay. Yeah, and then there's also uh, the great uh, National Geographic series called Mars, uh, which is obviously Elon Musk is actually in that. And that's a, a great uh, both sci-fi and documentary where they talk about present time exploration to Mars, and then they intersperse it with futuristic scenes where you go to Mars. And it basically is. It's just disaster capitalism blasts into space. Um, and really shows how, yeah, if, if none of these things fundamentally change in terms of who we are and how we relate to each other, it doesn't matter how far into space we go. <laughs> the same stuff is going to go with us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the expanse is awesome. Uh, Don writes, I read that the USA experienced record gun sales in 2020. That's scary. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Like, anytime stuff like this happens, notice the impulse is to screw society i'm going to protect what's me and mine like that kind yeah. of thinking um rather than this impulse towards like what is healthiest for us as a as communities as societies yeah. um there's this def yeah. this militaristic defending of individual things as though that somehow leads to the good life it's not. yeah a while a while back a, a friend of mine was saying uh, she said yeah every man that i know is wanting to go buy a gun <laughs> <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really interesting. Um, uh, Julia writes, uh, yep, most of us live in the realm of what bad choice is there to make today? Tell the truth and shame the devil, Dan. Thank you. Uh, James writes, I heard you can't catch COVID if you drive with the top down and keep <laughs> in the middle of winter. Yep. That's true. That's scientifically yeah. verifiable. That's, yeah. According and to Bruce, the boss. Bruce is probably already vaccinated. So, mm -hmm. uh, Becca writes, uh, 
Connecticut just lifted the COVID guidelines for faith communities. We're all pretty clear <laughs> that it's a separation of church and state issue and inspired by health and safety. Churches are one of the top three places for community spread in the state. It's infuriating. Our governor is feeling the burnout too, I guess. Yeah. yeah and, you know, th this this is something that's, that is definitely happening within church world, uh, the church world. I mean, I, I'm talking to more and more pastors who have that attitude. They're just like, to hell with it, you know. If, if people want to come and do in-person worship, fine, we're going to do it. I'm tired of being yelled at. I'm tired of getting mean emails um, and whatever. Um, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not being a gatekeeper for this anymore. And so, um, yeah, so there, there is, you know, we, we are being pressed forward into some kind of future. And I think that, um, that there is an inevitability. It feels like there's an inevitability to that one way or another. And uh, so to me, the the issue of, uh, you know, organizing community support, uh, spiritual life, uh, how are we going to help shape that, that future? Um, and if you haven't read uh, Octavia Butler, uh, The Seed Cycle, Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I would highly recommend it. Um, you know, she, uh, the, the main character is this young girl. Uh, it's in a, it's in a kind of post-apocalyptic future in Los Angeles. Uh, and she's the daughter of a Baptist minister and she invents her own religion. And it really is, uh, all about this issue of shaping change. Um, and it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's horrifying. Um, mm -hmm. it makes us look like upbeat and cheery and optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Octavia Butler is, uh, uh, totally an author to read in times like these. Yeah. Like all yeah. of her stuff kind of touches incredible. on important themes. Uh, Gus writes, uh, optimism and pessimism are both deterministic. It'll not be be okay. So there's nothing to be done either way. Hope is uh, with some dumb luck and lots of work, a good thing might happen. Yeah. I think hope is different than optimism. It, at least it should be. Mm -hmm. And hope is yeah. saying like, we could, let's use what tools we have at our disposal and engage this in the expectation that, if, that change is possible. Mm -hmm. Like optimism causes you to lean back. Um, hope should cause you to lean forward and kind of challenge things. Yeah, the way Buddhism talks about this is that, um, you know, you, you have the two, uh, the two extremes of uh, idealism and nihilism, and that, that both of those are uh, a kind of fake, uh, deluded response to reality, and that the middle way is the way of realism, where uh, you engage the world as it is with uh, all of its uh, wonders and all of its misery, uh, but you are also not overcome by that. Um, mm. And so, uh, yeah, and, and to me, that's also very much what the Christian spiritual life talks about. You know, we're very real about engaging the suffering of the world. Um, you know, Jesus was not an optimist. <laughs> um, uh, but at the same time, we also don't say that that the suffering of the world is the last uh, word. I like that. You know, it's interesting how <laughs> this whole idea of middle way and moderate tends to get co-opted by kind of current political trends. But I, I love the way that Buddhism, the, the middle way is to see what is as kind of the core starting point of life and spirituality is just not mm -hmm. taking an unflinching unflinch, look at reality, mm -hmm. um, which is not the way most people think of middle ways in our society. Right. No. no. Uh, so, uh, serious rights, Elon Musk is Lex Luthor. <laughs> oh, did we skip the, uh, oh yeah. yeah serious serious. Rights, uh, comfortable yeah. white Americans have the luxury to be fatalistic and rolling over about the choosing between two horrible choices. When they, when many outside of that bubble, not only die from that horrible situation, but often destroy their relationships and spirits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, uh, Julia writes, Illinois was the uh, leader in 2020 gun purchases. That's okay. uh 
That's Illinoising. See what I did there? Cheryl writes, uh, book club, Gus, anybody? Do you know The Universal Schoolhouse by James Moffat? And now I read his Harmonic Learning. Possible answers. Subtitle is Spiritual Awakening Through Education. I've heard people oh, reference this, cool. but I've not read any of it. I don't know. If, are you familiar yeah. with this stuff, Dan? No, I'm not. I'm not. So not a good thing to check out. The transmission library grows every day. Uh, Susan writes, the Zoom church can be good. Mark, I'm assuming you're referring to your partner, Mark, is connected with a Chicago Mennonite church, and they have some creative services on Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Julia writes, hemmed in by a U.S. Supreme Court ruling, Governor Gavin Newsom has agreed to allow houses of worship to reopen in California with limited attendance during the COVID-19 pandemic, end quote. There's a lot of that yep. going around. Uh, yep. Allison writes, in the beginning of the pandemic, I welcomed the disruption and the unveiling that exposed some of the inadequacies of our culture and oppressive structures. As it has gone on, I have suffered an acute depressive episode. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still think this is an opportunity for us as humans, communally and individually, to grow and change. It was easy to fall into an unhealthy shame for feeling depressed, but maybe those who are suffering from poor mental health are actually responding and feeling a pro and it cuts off there. Uh, again, a reminder that uh, comments over a certain length will just get clipped off and we have no way of seeing that. But I agree, yeah. like there is a, there's a reasonability to being depressed and anxious right now. Mm -hmm. And so treating that as though it's an unhealthy response that needs to be medicated away, although there's some truth to that, it's short-sighted. Um, people feel depressed and anxious for reasons that are not yeah. just inherited biological traits only. Yeah. So we need to recognize that and like, there's reasons to be just <laughs> right. discouraged as hell right now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, Rudolf Steiner, who was a, a 20th century Christian uh, mystic and started uh, among other things, Waldorf education and biodynamic gardening and uh, anthroposophic medicine. Uh, you know, he, he talked a lot about the fact that, uh, illness is not an individual phenomenon. It's a systemic phenomenon, and it's also a spiritual phenomenon, and that the illnesses that arise at a given point in time in a particular society are a reflection of the spiritual illness that that society is struggling with. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, when, when you see a lot of people who are depressed and anxious and burnt out and confused. Um, that isn't simply uh, an individual thing. That That is the symptom of post-consumer capitalism. Like when there's nothing left to buy and there's no more environment left, that's a bad thing. <laughs> and, and people feel depressed and bad about that. And that's, that's good. So it's, um, yeah, it's very important. Um, you know, as we care for ourselves and each other uh, in the midst of our struggles to also recognize that they they are a reflection of the larger uh, sy system. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam writes, optimism also isn't the same as naivete or willful, willful ignorance. He also says, yeah. I like to talk about being a realistic optimist. What we have in the glass is what we have to work with. The glass itself is a tool. So I'm hearing, nice. uh, like yeah, that. and this is different ways of talking. Like, so maybe optimism isn't the way Gus was talking was hope instead of optimism. And you're talking about a realistic optimism rather than a naive mm -hmm. optimism. To me, it's all yeah. kind of pointing at the same type of thing with different kind of language. But it's a good point. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be honest about what we have to work with. Let's not yeah. let uh, shrink away from looking uh, deeply at what's real and then act accordingly. Mm -hmm. And so let's uh, resist the impulse towards wishful thinking or sort of a disengaged way of looking at things and just work with reality. And that, it's hard that we're, so many people are reality averse mm -hmm. these days. Yeah, and of course, you know, that's what got us doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Is that we were, you know, looking at what was going on and we said, well, you know, what are some resources that we have and what can we put together? and how can we use the tools at hand? And 
you know, for me, this has been incredibly uh, positive uh, throughout this time and connecting with all of you wonderful people, mm -hmm. brilliant people. Um, it's been very uh, uplifting and supportive. And, you know, we've heard uh, that from others as well. And so, you know, that's, that's it's a way forward. We don't have any, uh, we don't have any answers or simple solutions uh, by any means, but it's it's a community of uh, real thought leaders that, um, yeah, it's been, been a valuable thing to do. Mm -hmm. All right, and Catherine gets the last word. Last word from Catherine. Catherine writes, makes me think of medieval plague art again. Uh, I remember when we had you talk about that like a while ago. Yeah. Uh, specifically yeah. the images of dancing skeletons live people dancing with death, etc. Feels like the art of people who were really over it, but resigned to the reality that the plague wasn't going anywhere. Yes. Yeah, to me, you know, this is, uh, this, there we go. Uh, to me, there's like all sorts of uh, space for art, for dark humor, uh, satire as ways of kind of uh, accepting reality, but playing with it and not allowing it to have the final word rather mm -hmm. than kind of disassociating and turning away from it. Um, another comment, I guess Adam gets the last word. Uh, when we talk about Adam being real, or dealing. Uh, when we talk Ooh. about being real, we tend to use that as being really about the negative. We need to be just as real about the positive. Life is a spectrum and not a single story. Call it what you will, optimism, hope, naivete, etc. But from a spiritual standpoint, I learned that it's better to die believing you can overcome a fatal disease than giving in. Um, yeah. And uh, that's, I think that's a true point. Like we, it's not just fighting against the void. There are actual bright spots and things to be hopeful about. And we need to like marshal that and, and lean in towards that without dismissing the complexities and difficulties. And that's a hard balance. Um, but it all is to me, it's like pointing back to what Dan talks about the Buddhist middle way of let's deal with reality as reality and go from there. So, yeah. Well, all righty. We made Thanks a, a lot. Great to and, see all of you. Yeah. And uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Uh, yeah. We don't know what we're talking about yet, but I'm sure it'll be astonishing in its greatness. <laughs> See, you tomorrow. Right. See ya. Bye.